Hi everyone. This presentation brings to you the detail on compound eyes of Pinaeus indicus. Pinaeus indicus, they do have different kinds of sense organs. Uh, the major uh, sense organs include statocyst, a pair of statocyst, a pair of compound eyes. Then tactile uh, receptors like antennas, antennae, mandibles, etc. And the olfactory setae or bristles that are present on the appendages. Okay, so these are the ma uh, major kinds of sense organs. Among that, compound eyes are very important and are uh, a unique structure found in arthropods. The name compound eyes uh, has come because it is not a single uh, visual unit or uh, it is not a, just like a simple eye. Instead, a compound eye is an uh, aggregation of numerous simple eyes. Okay, these uh, aggregation work together as a compound eye. Now, the pineas they have a pair of stalked compound eyes present. Look, just be below the rostrum, you can see the rostrum over here, and this is the compound eye. It is usually stalked. Okay, and this stalked uh, compound eye it is uh, uh, present just below the rostrum, at the base of the rostrum. You can see here, this stalk is two jointed and this stalked compound eyes, it is uh, attached to the body through a arthrodial membrane. Coming to the, uh, the compound eye, you can see, this, is, this figure shows the section of a compound eye and you can see, this part is the, this hemispherical part is actually the compound eye. And you can see here, the compound eye is formed of numerous rod-shaped uh, units. Each of these units is what is referred as omaterium. It is known as an omaterium. So, in the case of compound eyes, it is formed of numerous uh, visual units similar to a simple eye. And these visual units are what is referred as a as an omaterium. So, omaterium, they are long, rod shaped, closely packed uh, visual units that together form what is known as a uh, compound eye. From the surface, if you see, you can see that on the compound eye, it is being uh, covered by a cornea layer, a cuticular membrane, okay, a cuticular layer. And these cuticular layer, you can see when you look at look from the surface, this cuticular layer, it is divided into smaller, smaller units. And each of this unit is what is referred as a corneal facet or simply facets. Each of this facet, it represents the outer surface of a single omaterium. Okay, so this is what the um, structure section of a compound eye is. We will look into the structure of a single omaterium. In detail, uh, when you look into the omaterium, it is divided into three regions. Okay, uh, the outer part. This is the outer part. Okay, of all the omaterium, you can see the outer part it is known as the dioptrical region. Dioptrical region. It is otherwise known as focusing region or focusing apparatus. This region is uh, uh, like uh, responsible for focusing the light which falls on the cornea. And then making it to uh, fall on the uh, rhodopsin present inside in the receptor region. Okay, so that is a focusing region or the dioptrical region. Internal to the dioptrical region, we can find the receptor region, and the receptor region is responsible for receiving the light and converting this light into impulses, which will be carried by the next part of the omaterium, that is the optic nerve. And this is taken to the brain where the image formation is uh, done. Okay, so you can see this actually figure shows three omaterium placed one uh, adjust into the other. You can see here this is one omaterium, this is the second one, and this is the third one. Each omaterium, if you see, it, it is made up of bundle of cells, and these bundle of cells it can be divided into two, as we have already mentioned, two regions the dioptrical region and the receptor region. The outermost part of each of the omaterium, it is formed of a cuticular covering. This is a transparent, the, a part of the cuticle which is transparent and covering each omaterium forms the cornea. 
okay so there is a transparent cuticular covering over the uh, what you call compound eye the part of the cuticle which is transparent and covers each hematidium is what is referred as a cornea as already uh, mentioned the arthropod the pineus and every arthropod do have peculiar nature of molting or what is known as ecdysis during which the outer cuticular covering is being shed off and the new cuticular layer is formed again isn't it newly formed here whenever the corneal part is shed off during the molting a new corneal layer has to be produced and this is being produced by a pair of corneagen cells which is placed just beneath the cornea so just beneath the cornea in each amatidium you can find a pair of uh, epidermal cells and this modified epidermal cells it is they are known as corneagen cells or lenticular cells okay now just beneath these uh, lenticular cells you can see so corneagen cells it is responsible for the production of or secretion of cornea as and when it is being shed off during the molting process now just beneath or internal to the corneagen cells you can find a group of four very elongated uh, cells which are known as cone cells or vitrelli okay these cone cells are widened wider towards the external or the outer region while it is inwardly tapering and elongated uh, when you take a section of the uh, cone cells at the wider region this is how it looks like a group of four cone cells placed in this way the inner borders of the cone cells they are you can see it is refractive and they are transparent and these uh, cone cells they secrete uh, a transparent refractive body it is known as crystalline cone okay and this crystalline cone it is placed in the center so this is how it is arranged that is crystalline cone in the center which is surrounded by a group of four cone cells or vitrelli now going inwardly uh, uh, towards the inner side these cone cells are uh, arranged so close to each other they are very narrow and tapering and if you take a section of that part you can see without any cone cells in the center this is how it is being placed but you can see that uh, the vitrelli it is surrounded by pigment sheet at the towards the inner side okay this pigment sheet it is otherwise known as iris sheet or iris pigment fine now the pigment sheet it do have uh, the ability to uh, contract and uh, stretch out depending upon the intensity of light that enters the omatidia now so uh, this region from the cone the cornea till the um, what you call the cone cells it comes under the dioptrical region and this area is responsible for focusing the light that falls on into each of the omatidium focusing it in so that it falls direct uh, um, what you call directly on the retinal cells okay just beneath or just in uh, beneath the uh, cone cells you can find very elongated uh, narrow uh, set of cells and these cells are known as retinular cells or retinal cells these retinular cells uh, you can see here these are the retinular cells okay retinular cells usually they are found in a group of 7 to 8 retinular cells arranged in this manner okay these retinular cells do have uh, visual pigments light sensitive visual pigments inside them the visual pigment which is found in the pineus it is rhodopsin okay when light falls on it it is light sensitive pigment right so when light falls on it what happens is this rhodopsin it undergoes certain chemical reactions and this lead to the development of an action potential it is somewhat like a voltage uh, development okay so this action potential it will uh, trigger the development of nerve impulses okay and these nerve impulses it is being taken to the brain uh, and the rest of the uh, image formation takes place in the brain so what happens is the rhodopsin is the one which actually triggers the nerve impulse transmission and the uh, uh, what you call the uh, rhodopsin is present inside the retinular cells so what happens is the retinular cells has to be in contact with the optic nerve so at, from the base of each of the retinular cells arises axon a single axon and so what happens is an omatidium single omatidium do have 7 to 8 uh, 
retinular cells and each of the retinular cells do have a single axon emerging out from the base. So a total of 8 axons, 7 to 8 axons arises from the base of each omatidium. And the axons arising from every omatidium, they join together and finally form what is known as an optic nerve. And this optic nerve from each of the uh, compound eye move uh, uh, to take the stimulus from the uh, eye to the uh, brain. Okay, this is how the structure is. Okay, I hope this is clear. So we have already seen that uh, the omatidium it is divided into two regions: dioptrical region or the focusing area, and then the receptor region. Dioptrical region is responsible for the focusing of light that falls onto the falls on each omatidium, and the dioptrical region is formed of uh, from the outside. If you see cornea. Then a pair of cornealgin cells, a set of four cone cells forms the dioptrical region. Receptor region again from the outside if you see very long narrow set of seven to eight retinular cells form the receptor region. These retinular cells do have rhodopsin inside. And these retinular cells, yes, uh, uh, these retinular cells, they are arranged in this way. They have microvilli. The inner borders of these retinular cells are refractive and they are light sensitive and the microvilli along the inner sides of the retinular cells they interdigitate just like crossing the fingers okay uh, crossing the uh, like uh, when you uh, put the two uh, uh, like um, uh, hands together and if you just cross the fingers of the uh, uh, this one you can see it is interdigitate okay so interdigitation of these microvilli along the inner borders of the uh, retinular cells brings about the formation of a rod like structure in the center it is known as the rhabdo okay so this is about the structure of a materium 